Hello everyone, welcome to the video series on MCQ answer explanation. In this video, I will explain about physiology related questions. Let us see the first question. The first question is QT interval prolongation results in options are increased heart rate, decreased heart rate, increased cardiac output, no effect on the heart. Now let us understand about QT interval. See this QT interval is related to ECG. In ECG we have waves are there, P wave, QRS wave and T wave. P wave indicates atrial depolarization. QRS wave indicates ventricular depolarization. T wave indicates ventricular repolarization. So the distance between Q and T indicates ventricular depolarization and repolarization. That means the time taken to ventricular contraction and relaxation. If the length is increased, the time taken to ventricular contraction relaxation is increased. So what happens? Heart rate decreases. Understand this concept? QT prolongation is inversely proportional to heart rate. So the option B, decreased heart rate is the correct answer. Now, let us move on to the next question. Now the next question is cardiac cells that show automaticity. Example, uh, sorry, options are sinoatrial node, atrioventricular node, Purkinje fibers, all of the above. Now let us understand this word automaticity. See, automaticity means the ability to undergo spontaneous depolarization. Understand this one. See, cardiac activity, cardiac contractions, everything is because of depolarization. There are certain specialized cells in heart which will undergo spontaneous depolarization. They do not need external stimulation either from neuronal system or from any other chemicals. They don't need it. Spontaneously they give, they undergo depolarization. That is what gives cardiac contractions. Now in the cardiac cells, AV node, SCA node, Purkinje fibers, all of them has got this automaticity. This is the reason why you can have heart transplantations. Like even if you take out the heart from the human body, it gives contractions. It does not need CNS support. No innervation is required. Still, it gives contractions. That is what is called as automaticity. So the answer for this question is all of the above. One more note, SCA node is known as pacemaker. Pacemaker means pace means the cardiac rhythm. Maker means that is where the cardiac contraction starts. So from the SCA node, when a signal comes, cardiac contraction starts. Hence, it is known as pacemaker. Let us move on to the next question. Cerebrospinal fluid flows in. Options are option A subdural space, subarachnoid space, epidural space, perivascular space. Let us understand this. See, there is a fluid which is surrounding our brain and uh, uh, a spinal cord. The job of this fluid is it will help us to protect from mechanical uh, frictions. So, brain will not undergo any mechanical frictions because of this fluid thing. It also provides nutrients, substance exchange and all of them. Now this fluid flows in particular space in the brain. Now brain is covered with certain layers called as meninges. Meninges is made up of three layers, dura mater, arachnoid mater, pia mater. The space between dura mater and arachnoid mater is known as epidural space. The space between arachnoid and pia mater is known as subarachnoid space. Now in the brain, cerebrospinal fluid flows here. In the subarachnoid space, the fluid flows. So this is what is the answer. Option B, subarachnoid space is the right answer. Coming to the next one, epidural space. See, you have dura mater, arachnoid mater and pia mater is there and out here, bones are there. In the brain, the bone and dura mater is fused but in the spinal cord, there is a small gap is there. Now the gap between this bone, periosteum and dura, uh, dura mater is known as epidural space. Now here is where pregnant women get injected during deliveries. The general anesthetic is given in epidural space. It is called as epidural space. The last one, perivascular means vascular means blood vessel. There is a space around blood vessel that is called as perivascular space. Now, let us go to the next question. Blood brain barrier is formed by C. Uh, options are A. Tight endothelial cells, B. Pericytes, C. Astrocyte process, D. All of the above. Now, understand this one. Unlike normal blood vessels, the brain blood vessels has got tight endothelial cell junctions. That means, see, in normal blood vessels, the endothelial cell make this basement of blood vessels. The endothelial cells has got certain gaps are there in normal uh, uh, blood vessels. In the brain, they are closed. They are called as tight endothelial junctions. Now, above this, there is a specialized cell in the brain called as pericytes that will cover this junction. So, pericytes are there. On the top of it, astrocyte processes will cover like this. So look at this tight endothelial junction, pericyte and astrocyte process. So blood brain barrier is made up of all the three. So the option here is all the above. 
understand this one astrocytes are specialized cells which appear like stars hence hence they are called as astrocytes there are, there are certain process branches comes out of the cell that will cover these tight endothelial junctions so all the three will make a blood brain barrier let us move on to the next question somatostatin effect is somatostatin is a kind of hormone which is released in the intestinal tract it is released in pancreas and in gastrointestinal mucosa now the options given are decreased gastric acid decreased pepsinogen decreased insulin release all of the above understand this somatostatin is an inhibitory hormone stasis means to stop so it stops all the things like it decreases gastric acid release it decreases pepsinogen release it decreases insulin as well as glucagon release hence the option is all of the above so these are all uh, about uh, physiology related questions thank you for watching this video all the best